All right, today we're going to be going over our final review, 41 through 60. These are the last 20 problems on your review sheet. Let's go over the first one. What's the Pythagorean theorem? Addison, help me out. A squared plus B squared equals C squared is correct. This is a formula you're going to want to have memorized on your final. It will look exactly like that. I'll ask you to write it out. There will be a few different formulas, so make sure that you know your formulas. Next up, Mason, what's the simple interest formula? I equals PRT. Guys, what does the I stand for? Interest. interest the P? Principle. Principle times rate, rate times time. time. Okay? So once again, there's going to be a few problems that will ask you about the simple interest formula. You'll want to put that down. Okay? Next up. Help me out with this one, Ashley. Okay? We want to start with our formula. I equals PRT. Now what? Fifteen hundred times what? Okay, does anyone see anything that should be different? What should be different? The decimal, okay? We have to do something about this right here. 8.5 is not the same thing as 8.5%. We've got to change 8.5% to a decimal. So, Ashley, how would I do that? Okay, move it two spaces, which direction? To the, to the left. Okay, so one, two, put that zero in there, and what's my answer? Okay, so we want to multiply instead of 8.5% times 0 0.085. All right, put that in your calculator. Help me out to know what the interest is. Okay, 1,275. What units should be attached to that? The dollar sign, okay, because it's talking about the interest or the amount of money that they had for that, okay? 1,275 is correct for the interest. Excellent job. All right, here we go to the next one. Use the simple interest formula to find the unknown quality or quantity. What's the formula? I Okay, now help me out. What should I plug in for my I? Okay. Uh-huh. 0 0.05 because you changed that percent to a decimal. Okay, since we don't know our T yet. So now I'm going to bring down my equal sign. Can I do any work to the left of the equal sign? Yeah, can I do anything for that side? Or should I just bring it down? Okay, just bring it down. Can I do any work on the right of the equal sign? What could I do? Okay, when you multiply those together, what do you get? And what else do I need to bring down? The T, good job. Okay, how do I get that T by itself? Divide by 11.25, and when you do that, what do you get? Okay, thank you for telling me years because we are trying to find our time. Your time will always be in years. Questions? Evaluate the expression when x equals 5 and y equals 12. What does that word evaluate mean? Solve. solve. Okay, so we're trying to solve it, and we are going to be plugging in these numbers. Tati, do the first one for me, number 45. Okay, so we just plugged those in. What is 5 squared? 25. What's 12 squared? What's 25 plus 144? 169, and what is the square root of 169? 13. Should I do a plus or minus in front of that? Okay, we don't want to add the plus and minus because the original problem already had the square root right there. So the answer we know is going to be a positive answer. Okay, let's go to the next one. Do it for me, please, Jakari. Okay, 61 minus 5 times 12. Okay, what is 61 minus 60? 
1. And what's the square root of 1? It is 1. All right. Questions? Okay, here we go on to the next one. Solve the equation and round it to the nearest tenth. Sherelle, help me with this one. Okay, why are you minusing 9 before you're getting rid of the square? Because there's two things that I've got to get rid of on that side. Okay, you will keep the exponent with the variable as long as possible. So we are, like you said, going to get rid of that 9. The opposite of plus 9 is minus 9. And what do I do now? Okay, am I finished? All right, we want to get rid of this square right here, and the opposite of a square is a square root, so we're going to square root both of these. That cancels out. D equals what? Five. Correct or incorrect, guys? Incorrect. Why is that incorrect? Why is it positive and negative? Okay, because we were the ones who introduced this radical sign right there. You will always do positive and negative, okay? Now, here's why. I could take this positive 5 and plug it in up here. What is positive 5 squared? 25, okay? And then we know 25 plus 9 is 34. But let's say that instead I was going to do the negative 5. What is negative 5 squared? Uh, Why is negative 5 times negative 5? When you multiply two negative numbers, you get a positive. So still, I could plug in negative 5 right there, and I would still get 25 plus 9. So that's why you have to have it positive and negative. An easy way to remember that is whenever we are the ones who introduce that radical sign, you always put positive and negative. Okay? Let's go to the next one. What is the formula that I want to use when I'm dealing with a right triangle like this? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We're using the Pythagorean theorem, okay? What's my unknown? C squared. C squared. So I'm just going to put C squared there, all right? It doesn't really matter what you do for A squared and B squared. So who, who tell me what you got for A? Okay, 9 squared plus 4 squared, all right? What is 9 squared? 81. What's 4 squared? Okay, equals C squared. What is 81 plus 97, or plus 16? 97. 97 equals C squared. You want to get that C by itself, so we're going to square root both sides there. C equals, when you put the square root of 97 into your calculator, what comes out? 9.848578. Okay, so a big number, 9.84885. Notice the instructions say round to the nearest tenth, okay? So I only want to the nearest tenth. This one right here is going to ask that one, are you five or bigger? What's he say? No. no. So what's the answer? 9.8. 9.8 what? I saw a lot of people doing centimeters squared. Why do I not want to square that? It's it's the length of something. You're finding out how long this is right here. I don't want to know the area of it. I want to know the length of it. So it is just going to be 9.8 centimeters. What formula do I use to find the unknown side length? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. What's my unknown? We don't know B squared, okay? So now I've got to figure out which one is A and which one is C. How do I figure out what C is? It's always going to be the diagonal one, or more specifically, it's the one opposite of that right angle, okay? So C is going to be what, guys? 30 squared, which means A has to be 14 squared. All right, what is 14 squared? 196 plus B squared equals, what's 30 squared? 900. All right, my goal is to get B by itself. There's a 196 over here and there's a square over here. Which one do I get rid of first? 196. 196. Always keep the exponent as long as you can. All right, how do I get rid of that 196? Why do we minus it instead of divide it? Because Right now what I'm doing is I am adding 196. So I don't want to divide because that would not get rid of anything, okay? To get rid of that, I've got to do the opposite, which is minus 196 on both sides. This cancels out. What's 900 minus 196? 
704, how do I get B by itself? Do the square root of both sides, and you find out B equals what? 26.5 centimeters. Okay, I walked around. A few people had the correct answer, but they forgot to put the units. All right, don't forget the units each time. Okay, next up, find the area of the triangle. Kayla, what's the formula for area of a triangle? A equals one half times base times height. Help me out with this one. Go ahead and do it. What's my base? base is seven, feet. seven feet. And what's my height? Um, six. six feet. Okay. So now let's multiply that together to find out what the area is. Half times seven times six. Okay, 21 feet squared is correct. Why did you square those feet? You're finding the area, the amount of space that it is. So you always, whenever you have area, you want to square your feet. Let's go on to the next one. Same idea. Find the area of the triangle. When you think you have the correct answer, go ahead and stand beside your chair. Okay, once again, I saw a lot of correct answers as I walked around. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Sorry, just kidding. That's not the one that you wanted. <laughs> We're finding the area. So what's the formula? A equals All right, that's definitely more accurate. A equals, and what's my base? Five. Five. What's my height? Three. And what do you get when you multiply that together? 7.5 inches squared. Why do we square the inches? Because we found the area. Remember, every time when you're going back through on your final, if I ever ask you for the area, please make sure your units are squared. We're finding the unknown base or height of the triangle. What is the formula for a triangle? One half, one half times base times height. Do I know my area? 126.1 equals one half times, do I know my base? I don't know the base yet, okay? It's unknown right there. So we're gonna keep the B. Do I know my height? 19.4. Times 19.4, okay? So there's no work that I can do to the left of the equal sign, so I'm just gonna bring down 126.1. Is there any work I can do to the right of the equal sign? One half. Um, What's half of 19.4? 9.7. 9 9.7, and I still gotta bring down my base, okay? Now, you wanna get that base by itself? When you do it, what is your base? B equals 13 yards. 13 yards. OK. Questions? It asks us to find the perimeter and the area of the parallelogram. What is my formula for finding the perimeter of a parallelogram? B equals 2 times the length plus 2 times. Plus two times. Okay, two times the length plus two times the width. Just remember that when you are trying to find the perimeter, you are basically trying to find the distance around the figure, okay? So Addison, help us out now, what do we do? What's my length? 12. What's my width? Keep going. What's 2 times 12? 24. What's 2 times 6? Okay, what's 24 plus 12? 36 what? 36 feet. Okay, so if I was to measure all the way around that parallelogram, it's 36 feet around it. Okay, next up, Ashley, what's the area of a parallelogram formula? Okay, area equals base times height. What's my base? 12. 12. And what's my height? 5. five. What is 12 times 5? 60. 60 what? Feet squared. Thank you for saying squared. Good job. Who remembers the formula for area of a trapezoid? What is it? A equals times base times plus base 2 times h. Okay. Mason, do it for me. We're on number 55. Oh, I thought it was... That's okay. Help me okay. out with this one. Okay. Um, okay, so 
one half times six plus fourteen equals ten. Can you do oh Okay. Can I do any work inside of parentheses first? Mm, yes. yes. What can I do? Seventeen. I mean, yeah, six plus fourteen equals twenty. Good job. Okay, now all you're going to do is you're just going to multiply these numbers together. Because remember, according to order of operations, you want to do any work inside the parentheses first, okay? So what is half times 20 times 10? 10 times 10 equals 100 inches squared. Okay, great job. Thank you for telling me inches squared because it's area. We always want to square the units. What is my formula we got to start with? Okay, remember for your final, you're gonna to wanna to know all these formulas. So I know my area. I know base one is five, base two is eight, and we're still looking for that height. So what should I do first? Do the parentheses. Do the parentheses work first. What's five plus eight? Okay, so times 13 times H. We can't do anything to this side. Now what's half of 13? equals 6.5 times h. Your whole goal is to get h by itself. When you do that, you find out that the height is what? Three feet. Three feet. Asking us to find the circumference of the circle, use 3.14 for pi and don't round your answer. So for this, we've got to remember what the difference is between radius and diameter. Is there anyone who can explain that to me? What do you think, Jakari? No formula, I just want to know the difference between radius and diameter. Oh. Think. Um, the um, radius is half of the diameter. Okay, the radius is always going to be exactly half of the diameter. So if I've got a circle like this, this is going to be my radius, but then the diameter is going to be all the way across, okay? So just make sure that you remember what the difference is between the two of those. So let's look at this first one. It says 18 inches. Did they give me the diameter or the radius? Diameter. They gave me the diameter. So what's the formula for circumference of a circle when C I have a C diameter? C equals pi times D. C equals pi times D, all right? Do I know what pi stands for? 3.14. What's my diameter? 18. When I do that, what's my circumference? 56.52 inches. Okay. Should I round this? No. No, why not? Because the instructions specifically said don't round your answer, so we don't want to round it, okay? Let's look at the next one. It says six inches right there. Is it giving me six inches? Is that the radius or the diameter? Radius. radius. How can you tell that's the radius? It's, half. it's exactly half of that length of the circle. So what's the formula for circumference when using a radius? C equals two pi. Two pi. Okay. What is pi? 3.14. What is R? Six. When you multiply all those things together, what's your circumference? 37.68 inches. Excellent. What is the formula that I'm going to be using? A equals pi times squared. Why are we using that? What's that the formula for? Area of a circle. Area of a circle. Okay, so here's what a lot of people think. They think, okay, I need a radius, I need a diameter, and they try to find the circumference. If you see a problem like this on your final, how do you know to use the area formula and not the circumference formula? Because it has the area area. Right here, it says you're finding it with the given area. You can see this is the area. So we want to deal with a formula that is going to use the area, okay? So let's start plugging some things in. We know 200.96 is our area. We know 3.14 is pi. How do I get R by itself? Divide, Divide by what? 3.14. Okay, you want to get rid of the numeric value that's right there next to the variable. This cancels out. And what does R squared equal? It equals 64, but you want to get that R by itself, so how do I do that? Square root it, because that will cancel it out. And what's the square root of 64? 8. 8, because 8 times 8 equals 64. So I'm going to stick it over here in my radius, 8 inches. Now, how can I easily figure out what the diameter is? Multiply it by 2, because if you remember, whenever you have this right here, okay, we know that this is... 8 inches. So in order to find out what the diameter is, we are simply going to double that. And what's the answer? 16, 16 inches is correct, all right? And that is our final answer for number 59. There's one last problem today on our review sheet. 
I want you to do it on your own and bring it to me once you have the correct answer. What is the formula I need to use? A equals pi R squared. All right, what do I do now? Fill it in. Help me out with what to fill in? 1,206. Okay, how do I get R squared by itself? I don't want to do the square root yet. I divide by 3.14. Remember, save that exponent till the very end. What is 1256 divided by 3.14? 400. 400. How do I get R by itself? Square root both sides, and I get what? 20. 20 what? Okay, 20 feet is going to be my radius, and how do I figure out my diameter? Multiply it by 2 or double it, and you get? 40 feet. Okay, so listen, guys, make sure you bring your review sheet to the final, okay? That will be 10% of your grade, all right? And that is it for today's lesson.